Hey there, welcome to another Lightroom video. This video is uh, gonna be both philosophical and practical. So let's start with the philosophical, the philosophy. Um, recently I watched a video by uh, Sean Tucker and if you're not already subscribed to his channel, please do so. He's got some great insights, some great philosophy about photography. He really helps me think about a why and what I'm doing. So um, I'll link to his video over here. He's talking about the reasons why we edit photos in with software and uh he, he says it really well uh here's my take on it in in my personal opinion i think there's a, a practical element uh, a logical element to um being okay with editing photos with software and then uh, a philosophical or emotional uh reason so first with the logical reason uh there are some who say that when you edit photos with software digitally um you know it's not the real photo anymore and in my logical argument to that is any photo isn't reality as soon as you click a photo take a photo with whatever camera you're using you're interpreting reality it's not exactly the same and there's a lot of reasons that happens uh, the lens choice you make where you put the camera um, making it brighter or darker with exposure in camera changes reality plus uh, our cameras don't exactly see no matter what, the way our eyes see. So every camera is interpreting reality already, and I think that's a good thing. Who's to say that the way we see with our human eyes is the best or maybe even the only way to accurately interpret the world? So cameras let us interpret, and I like that. So we're already interpreting. Uh, so, um, and if you look back at the history of, of, of uh, editing software, I mean, editing photos, um, it's been done since the first camera was invented. Uh, photos have been retouched, removing blemishes and scars and, and issues and technical defects. They've been um, retouched using uh, dodging and burning methods to add uh, light, take away light from certain parts of the photo. So it's been done since the beginning. It's been done in the traditional darkroom, and now we do it in the digital darkroom. So that's the logical reason. And here's the emotional reason, the reason why I think every photo needs to be edited because it finishes the story. The reason I'm taking photos is mostly artistic. Uh, it's not, uh, this is what it exactly looked like. I'm not want my camera to be a photocopier, a duplicator. I want it to be a device to say, here's what I saw and I hope you have a feeling as a result of that. So software lets me finish that. It lets me um, take the, the paint, the, not the painting, the photo, uh, which is a starting point, digitally interpreted the reality, and then I finish it with software. I might make it brighter or darker or brighter in part or darker in another, change some colors, modify colors, remove distractions, crop to a different size or orientation. All those things complete the story that I saw when I was taking the photo or now when I'm looking at it with a little bit of time and distance uh, down the road a little ways and thinking, oh, I didn't think about this when I was taking the image. Um, so it finishes the story and it also lets me put another layer of, of me, of Michael, into my photos. Uh, and I hope you do that with your photos, that you don't just download a preset and click once and go, that's my image now. No, it's, it's, that's someone else's image. That's someone else's uh, interpretation of color, light, and uh, other elements of an image. Um, it's great to learn from those. It's great to, uh, as you're watching other people's photos on social media or online or on YouTube, to be inspired and uh, want to try different things. I've done that a lot. Uh, and then don't just copy it though. Use it as a starting point. Modify it to fit your style, your voice, your preference, your story. So all of that is connected. There's a logical reason to use uh, software. One, most photos technically need it, especially if you're shooting in the raw file format. They're kind of flat and boring, as you'll see in a minute. Um, and then the emotional reason is you took this photo for a reason. You want people to feel or notice or have a reaction. So the software can help you complete that, to finish the story in the way you want. 
So we're going to hop into Lightroom here in a minute. I'll walk you through several of my photos and the way I edit them. Uh, the, they'll kind of have hopefully a consistent overall vibe to them, uh, a voice, uh, which has evolved for me over time. It's taken a little while to get there. Uh, and I'm sure in five years, it'll look different. Uh, I like that idea though. Uh, it's, I think it's growth. Um, I don't want my photos to always look the same. Um, they should be a natural progression from where I am now, where I am next year, where I am five years from now. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a look at some images, walk through my specific steps in Lightroom that I hope might be a, a jumping off point or a, a thought point for you, uh, either logically or practically. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to head into Lightroom right now. All right, so here we are in uh, Lightroom. We're going to take a look at uh, about seven photos. Uh, we're going to look at, uh, again, my general process in, in editing photos using Lightroom. And um, here's my general approach. Uh, the first thing I do when I look at a photo, so let's look at the first photo we're going to work on. That's the after, after and before. So uh, first look at this photo. The first thing I do is look at the technical stuff. Uh, obviously this is a little underexposed. And then the second thing I wanna do after I correct that is uh, think about the story, the mood, the feeling. Uh, so that's color, light, uh, and textures and things. Um, so uh, let's brighten this up a little bit. Also, what I want to do is down here at the bottom of the screen, uh, it's a little darker than I want, so I'm going to brighten that. You can see uh, we got a couple um, sensor dust spots here that I'll get rid of as well from a technical standpoint. And then we'll uh, change the mood of the, we'll richen the blues and we'll add a little bit of oranges to this just to make it feel more like a, a sunrise of happiness rather than this really misty kind of uh, it looks really dark here and it wasn't quite like this. It was warmer feeling, even though it's a chilly, chilly, foggy morning. All right, so let's get started. So in the basic panel on the right hand side here, once I'm in the develop module, I'm gonna take my exposure and start there. Um, so I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit and I usually start with exposure because it, it gives me a sense of what's gonna happen. Um, and exposures, I'm gonna just gonna tweak it a little bit because it's a kind of a big hammer. It's not very subtle. Uh, and then I'll come down here to highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks to get uh, the rest of the things I want. So I just nudged the exposure up a little bit on this photo. And then my next problem area are these darker uh, parts of the image down here, the shadow. So I'm going to turn that up. If anytime you go to the right with the slider, it will get brighter. So that's better. I like that. I'll turn up contrast just a little bit as well. And then uh, let's see what else we want to do. So um, I do want to play I, in the presence section. Uh, I'm going to come down here and uh, turn up texture just a little bit. I do like this. It's a nice subtle thing. I'll turn it up to about 20. Uh, clarity is going to add a little edge to this. And I'm going to leave that at zero for right now. Same with dehaze. If I turn up dehaze on this photo, your fog goes away. Oh, and there you, there's all your sensor dust spots. Uh, so I'm going to leave dehaze alone. I'm going to turn vibrance up a little bit. Vibrance increases the saturation, the richness of the colors that aren't very saturated. So on a lot of photos, I'll turn my kind of standard move for this is to turn that up to about 30. So that's going to bring out some of the, the more of the blues in the sky. We're starting to get a little pinks here in the middle. Uh, go back up to the temperature now, the white balance and tint. Uh, I'm going to take my white balance just a little bit to the right, add a little warmth to that, um, and then a little on the tint, I'm going to add just a little more uh, pink in there, just a little bit, went from 25 to 30, so I'm kind of liking this. Uh, I do need to address these sensor dust spots, so the tool for that is the spot removal tool. Um, so uh, I usually have the feather for this tool, which is the softness of the edge. I leave that right around 50. That's a nice, good number that works for most things. And then I change the size of my brush for this uh, uh, to using the wheel on my mouse. So I put the cursor over the uh, spot I want to replace, which is this one right here. It's just the exact size I need, so just a little larger. Click once, and then uh, the spot removal tool will... Um, grab an area from the photo that hopefully replaces the spot seamlessly. I'm going to come down here to this other one, uh, make this uh, 
the brush a little smaller and click there, one more here, and one more up there. So I think I got most of them, those four. I do have a video on the, uh, using the spot removal tool. Uh, see the link below for that. Uh, separate video, a little more detail on spot removal. So I've done most of the technical stuff here. I'm happy with the, the general uh, vibe of the photo. I'm gonna come now to uh, the HSL panel. Uh, I do have some moves I kind of make here that are, are pretty consistent uh, in my photos to give it kind of a, my photos a consistent voice. So I take the red, orange, and yellow, and I shift those a little to the left, which tends to warm things up. It moves the colors a little towards the oranges and reds. Uh, the green, I move a little to the right, so away from the yellow greens to the more uh, blue greens. And then I take the aqua and blue and also go generally about minus 10, minus something on those. Uh, again, that's shifting those colors to more teal away from the purple blues. So those are colors I like. Uh, again, a mood, a voice for my photos that I, I tend to like. Another um, voice or style thing is, is how I uh, tend to split toning. Uh, what I'll do is the color for the highlights I use is somewhere usually between 48 and 54, the hue, uh, and then the saturation, I'll turn that up. And so this is affecting the highlights in the photo, the brighter parts of the image. So it's the, the bright parts of the sunrise here. Uh, I don't want to go here. That feels like a, a special effect, a kind of comic book. I just want to accentuate it. Uh, that's my general method of editing photos. Sometimes uh, I'll go a little heavier, but uh, just to accentuate. Uh, saturation uh, down here uh, with the shadows. So I usually add a blue tint to my shadows. Uh, the hue is 206 that I tend to like. Uh, it's uh, the area code for uh, Seattle, if you if you care about that. Um, and then the saturation, uh, I'll turn that up a little bit uh, until it just eyeball looks good. So what this tends to do is tends to cool your photos off a little bit. Uh, and it was a chilly morning, so again, I don't want to turn it up to here. That's too much. Uh, usually somewhere between 20 and 30, depending on the image, is where I'll end up. Uh, um, so I also have a video on HSL that I'll link, a video on split toning, a little more conversation about that if you would like to watch those individual videos. Um, and then uh, last thing I'll do in this photo is, well, two more things I'll probably do, but for sure what I'm going to do is to use uh, the graduated filter. There's also a separate video on that as well. So I'm going to use the graduated filter to uh, brighten up the bottom of the image here just a little bit, bring out some of the shadows here without making everything else overall brighter. So I, it's, a, it's a, a tool that lets you selectively edit just a portion of the image. And this one, uh, the way it works is you start in the area you want to uh, affect and then pull and uh, make it fade out where you want it to stop, reposition as you'd like. Uh, when, I, when you're seeing this red, that's the area that's affected by the change. Um, I have the overlay turned on. Let me turn that off real quick, sorry. And then uh, what I wanna do here is a little extra exposure, not too much, mostly some extra, uh, brighten up the shadows a little bit. Again, not too much. Uh, position this to taste, straighten it out a little bit because the horizon's straight here. And uh, there we go. Um, so maybe one more thing I will do, and again, this is something I tend to do on most of my photos, I'll add a little vignette, which is a darkening of the corners. So uh, I take the amount slider and just pull it in. Uh, I don't want that, that's too much. Uh, I'll come somewhere, depending on the image, this one's already got some darker corners, both from the lens and from um, just the way the image rendered. Uh, so I'll go about minus 10, minus eight, somewhere, just, just a little subtle thing. So that's done, uh, and there we go. So here's where we started on this image. And here, oh, actually that's the, uh, the final edit from the uh, previous one. So uh, these are, uh, here's where we're at. Okay, so that's image number one done. Okay, for the, the second image I wanna work on, I'm gonna skip ahead to this uh, Seattle skyline from the ferry on a foggy morning. So there's a little theme going on. We're gonna go with fog for a minute. Um, 
The exposure for this photo, so from a technical standpoint, looking at the technical stuff, the exposure is pretty on where I want it to be. Um, it's a little flat as far as mood. It's very, very gray, uh, which is what happens on foggy days in Seattle. So I want to accentuate with light and color a little bit more of mood. So I'm going to go a little blue. A couple ways I'll do that. Also, um, I'm going to straighten the horizon. This is a, just a teeny bit crooked, so that's one of the other first things I look at in an image, do I need to crop it or straighten it or, or both? Also, I'm gonna, this little bit of uh, stuff in the water, I'm gonna probably uh, spot removal that just to smooth that out a little bit less eyeball distraction over there. So uh, let's get started. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the crop tool, uh, which is also my uh, straightened uh, rotate tool. So uh, I'm gonna click out here. Uh, the, uh, I use the right hand side usually and click and hold and you get the smaller grid so you can see what your horizon is doing a little more clearly and I'm just going to push up a little bit because it's a little low on the right hand side not a lot it's just a little bit but it bugs me uh, this is an opportunity to see if there's anything around the edges I want to crop and I'm okay with this one for right now so that looks good uh, so next one I want to do uh, I mentioned I want to go a little more blue with this, so I'm going to take my temperature slider, go a little to the left, just a little bit, just a nudge. Uh, so a little cooler on the temperature. I'm going to turn my contrast up. That'll get rid of some of the flat feeling of the light. Um, let's see. I'll go down and let's see what I want to do with highlights. Uh, I'll turn that up a little bit. Just make this top part of the sky go to white. Uh, and same with the whites. So it uh, really accentuates the difference uh, from the bright part to the darker. I'll pull the blacks down just a little bit. This is all eyeball stuff, just see what works. Uh, turn the texture up, I do like that. Uh, clarity just a little bit as well, that's gonna add some punch and drama. Uh, Dehaze I'll probably leave alone because that's gonna reduce the fog look and I don't want that. I might actually go just a little to the left. Uh, so add a little more haze. Uh, vibrance, I'll turn that up a bit uh, to about 30. That's kind of my go-to general starting point. Uh, we're getting a little purple now, so I might go to the tint slider and go just a little towards the green uh, to get rid of some of that purple that was happening. Um, and then down in HSL, again, I'll come to my standard stuff, a little about minus 8 to 10 on the reds, oranges, and yellows, a little plus on the green, a little minus on the blue and aqua, so I'm, I'm shifting the tint around. Uh, next over here, uh, highlights, I'm going to add a little, uh, little, uh, sorry, I went the wrong order. I knew the color first, so I'm going to go about uh, 40, 45, and just a little nudge of that. Uh, this is where I'm going to get a lot of the color. Uh, that blue that I want, I'm going to go to 206, that's kind of my go-to number for the hue on the slide on the shadows excuse me uh, saturation I'll turn that up a little bit so we're getting lots more blue in the image because there's lots of shadows here uh, so there's that uh, let's see what else I want to do let's go ahead and add a I'm not going to do a vignette because these corners are going to be a little ugly with that you can see what I mean it just kind of does that it's it's blue which doesn't look quite right so I'll just leave that alone um, Last, I want to come do uh, spot removal down here. Uh, so now I'm going to do it as a brush um, because it's not just one little spot that I can click on. So I'm just going to click and brush and just kind of go over the middle one more time. And let's see how that sample does. That's a pretty good, that's, ooh, that was better right over here. That's pretty good. Yeah. Kind of makes it disappear does it yeah unless you know it's there hard to see all right so that image is pretty much done so uh here's where we started on this image let me get to my history panel real quick oh it's the other way um so we started here and we ended up here so quite a big change, both a little bit of technical stuff, but mostly the mood, uh, storytelling. Another image I want to do that with is uh, this, uh, the ceiling in uh, this building in downtown Seattle. So uh, here's what I want to do here. Um, what I want to do here. <laughs> 
here's what I want to do on this image. Um, I kind of want to reverse the lighting. This, this, ha this is a pretty common issue technically. Anytime you have a strong backlight or a strong light source in your image, um, you will get um, exposures that tend to be something like this where uh, the middle parts, which are in this case the ceiling, are a little darker and not present in the photo. And then everything out here is a little too bright. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is technically gonna push the photo to overexposed. Uh, and it is already a little bit, especially right here. I'm just gonna go farther with it. If there's a defect in the photo, so this is overexposed, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and say, let's make it more overexposed. So I'll start with exposure. I'm gonna pump that up a little bit, just see what happens. And then I'm gonna take the uh, highlights and whites, which are the bright parts of the image, and just turn those up some more. So here's what that does. It pulls your attention away from the outside of the window, anything that might be out there, uh, which is what I want, because I want you to see up here on this ceiling, uh, all this detail here. So this just becomes a glow, which is fine. Technically it's wrong, but remember, we're doing art photos here. Um, so we're okay with that. Um, so I'll turn the contrast up a little bit, get some more blacks in here. Uh, pull the blacks down to help that out a little bit so these colors are getting richer. They're not as gray looking anymore. Um, also, I'll take the temperature slider. Again, for mood on this photo, what I want, this ceiling was so golden. I want to be more, uh, more in the gold tones here, so I'm gonna take my temperature and go a little to the right. Um, just kind of eyeballing it. Um, so I nudged it that way a little bit. Remember, we've got two other ways to do colors, at least. Uh, I'll use HSL for that, as well as split toning. So that's gonna where I'm gonna get the rest of this color that I want. Uh, texture, I'll turn that up, because uh, architectural things, um, as well as uh, metallic things, work well with texture, clarity, also the same kind of idea. And then dehaze, I'll turn that up a little bit as well, um, just to get all this kind of nice and crunchy up here. Get some really good detail, some drama happening in this ceiling, so you can really see that. I'll turn vibrance up a little bit, uh, and then I'm gonna leave saturation alone. All right, down to HSL. Uh, again, I'm gonna move the red, orange, yellow a little to the left. I suppose I should make a preset for this. I'll take the green a little to the right, even though there's really no green or blue in here, I'm just gonna still do that whole shebang. Uh, down in split toning, here's where I'm gonna get the rest of my uh, effect that I want on the ceiling. I'll turn uh, the hue to about 48 or 51, and then turn the volume up here with saturation. So you can see that's affecting the ceiling quite a bit. So um, somewhere here in the low to mid 20s, um, the shadows, again, my go-to, here we go, 206, if I can get there directly, and then saturation, turn that up just a little bit. If you turn it up all the way, uh, again, you kind of entered a special effect. Uh, I, I don't hate it, but I, I don't really love it. So uh, I'll keep that just a little subtle. Uh, it's mostly gonna affect the marble down here, or maybe a little bit out, any of the shadows out here. Um, so I'm doing pretty good. And then uh, one more thing I might do on this image is uh, the shadows. I'm gonna take the shadow slider and uh, brighten that. I take that to the right, brighten that up. That's gonna bring out even more detail, brightness to the ceiling. Blow this out just even a little bit more, which I'm totally fine with. I love how that glows and it makes this ceiling the hero of the photo. One more thing, we'll throw a vignette on here. Uh, right here, so we'll just darken the corners just a teeny, teeny bit. That's a little much. Somewhere around minus 10, I think. Uh, so on this image, here's where we started. Dark and gray and gloomy. And then here's where we ended up. Brighter, the ceiling's the star, not what's outside the window. Uh, so that tells the story I want from this image, the reason I took this photo. All right, next we're gonna go to this uh, poppy photo. Uh, underexposed a little bit, which is okay. Uh, I tend to underexpose just to keep the colors nice and rich and protect the highlights. Uh, digital photos, uh, if you make them too bright, the, the bright parts of the photos, as you saw in that previous photo, uh, will go to pure white and, and you just can't bring them back if that happens. So. All right, so uh, technically the first thing I'm gonna do here is go back up and start with exposure. We'll brighten this up a little bit. 
So the star of this, obviously, is the flower, the yellow flower. So uh, that's about where I want the flower to be, but the background now is a little too bright. Really what I want is a spotlight for the flower. So I want to kind of get, so what I'm going to do in this situation is I'm going to adjust exposure until my background is about where I want it. And that's about there. And then I'll uh, finish uh, with highlights and whites. Basically I'm adding contrast here uh, with these controls. Uh, and then I'll add a little texture just because I really want those water drops and raindrops. Clarity, dehaze, a little vibrance. You can see the pattern I'm doing here. So especially in the presence section, when you turn up texture, clarity, and dehaze, it tends to make it a little darker. So I might go back up to exposure, just brighten it just a teeny bit more. So it's pretty good. One more thing I wanna do on this, just to really bring all this out, is to use uh, the radial filter. Uh, I showed you the graduated filter on uh, the foggy sunrise photo. Uh, this is a similar thing, but it draws a circular shape, a little ellipse. So what I'm going to do here is draw from the center out, and basically what I'm doing is making a spotlight of light, so it's affecting the parts of the image inside this shape. When you're in invert mode, if I go the other way, turn off, it makes it brighter outside the shape. Um, well, this case, it's brighter because I turned the exposure up. Let me be clear here. I could make it darker inside, which would look like that, which is not what I want. Um, so it's brighter in here. I also have some additional things I can do in here as far as throw a little extra texture, clarity, and dehaze on uh, the inside. Uh, let all that work happen in here. Uh, I could even add a little more color in here. A uh, little change the color just a little bit more towards yellow. I don't want to go too far. I'm mostly just showing you what you can do here. Um, so let's go back to the global adjustments. Uh, I'm going to again take my HSL, the hue, satur uh, I mean the hue of these colors, uh, move them a little towards the orange just a little bit. We'll uh, come down to the highlights, uh, the split toning again. I did the saturation first, sorry, I did that backwards. Uh, just a little of this, because I don't want, it's starting to look a little too much, but sometimes that happens and you just back up. 206, that's gonna do a nice, um, create a nice um, contrast with, so it's gonna make these darker areas blue, which is kind of a complementary color to this uh, golden yellow orange. Um, so it creates really nice um, energy in the image. Uh, so there we go. So this one is done. Uh, let's throw a little, oh, almost done. We'll throw a little vignette on there as well. So I didn't need any spot removal on this. Um, sometimes on flowers you'll get little bits and pieces that you might want to bump like these little guys. I'm just going to leave them. Um, but uh, there you go. Maybe just brighten it overall just a little bit more. So let's go to the basic panel, just, just a little nudge that way. There we go. So here's where we started. Super dark, not the mood I wanted, not the happy rainy flower. Uh, here we go, it's, uh, it's still got a little bit of a, uh, a fall or a winter vibe with that blue in it, uh, which is when the season it was taken in, so I, I kinda like that. All right, let's uh, skip ahead uh, to the last one here. We're gonna go to the uh, the Blackbird at the Museum of Flight in Seattle. So uh, I take this photo a lot every time I go to the museum. I tend to take this image just because it's so dramatic. Just zoomed in, uh, minimalist. Uh, you just get the plane uh, in its textures and light, and it's, it's dark and moody. It's like Darth Vader's airplane. So um, what I'm going to do here is I've already got a lot of blue. I don't really need to crop. There's no spot removal I'm going to do. So what I want to do is increase the drama. So I'm going to use uh, local and global adjustments. So I'm going to use the basic panel and my other stuff that I always do and then throw in a couple, uh, some more local adjustments just to increase the drama. So uh, I'm going to leave temperature and tint alone for now. 
I like the darkness here. I mean, it's it's very dark. I might take the shadows just a little bit to the right. Uh, it's not going to brighten it too much, uh, which is okay. Uh, and then I'm going to leave the blacks alone for now. Uh, I will come down to texture and turn that up. Clarity a little bit as well. Uh, Dehaze is just going to add some more, uh, again, drama to this. I'll turn vibrance up just because it's something I, I do a lot. So we're going to get some of this more color coming out. And so now when I did that, I can start to see some of the... Um, the contours of the plane. So I'm gonna accentuate those, especially this highlight here, back here a little bit, here, uh, and over here, this shadow. I'm gonna accentuate those using an adjustment brush in just a moment. Let's come down to uh, my hue panel. I'm gonna just nudge these things a little bit like I've been doing today. So we're sh moving the color a little towards teal in the blues a little more towards uh, orange in the reds away from the pinks. Uh, I'm going to come down here to my split tone, do the same doggone thing I've been doing all day, uh, today at least. Uh, mid 40s for the number, saturation, I'll turn that up. So we're going to bring out some of this golden color here. Uh, we've already got lots of blues in here, so I'm going to go to my 206, which is a blue overlay I like in my shadows. And uh, you can see how, <laughs> how much we can add, we go crazy or uh, just keep it a little on the subtle side. Again, this blue is a nice complimentary what I'm gonna accentuate here on this, uh, this highlight of light over here and a little bit on the rest of the plane as well. Um, I am gonna go up to exposure and just brighten it in the uh, basic panel just a little bit because it's kind of dark so we can see just a little bit more what we're doing. All right, just a slight nudge here. All right, so my last step is to do some basically some contouring. Um, on the plane here. So anything that's bright, I'm gonna make a little brighter. Anything that's dark, I'm gonna make a little darker. So uh, my exposure right now is at 0.96. That is inherited from the last time I used this brush. Um, oop, I, that's the radio filter, sorry. So I wanna go to the adjustment brush, which is the tool over here on the far right. Uh, I have a video on that as well that I will link below. Um, what, one of the things I'm going to change on this from what I normally work is I'm going to turn the flow, which is how fast the brush effect builds up, uh, down to the low 60s. Uh, I, I don't have a, a Wacom tablet, which is pressure sensitive to when I draw. So uh, I'm brushing with a mouse, which is, is not the most accurate, uh, but it will get the job done. My uh, feathers at 50, that's just a nice way I like to work with this. And the size, I will vary depending on the area I'm working. So I'm going to start with the highlights. So a small brush on this little area right here. And I'm just brushing in a little more. Up here uh, on this part of the plane, I'm just brushing in a little more of the highlights. A little bit over here. A little down here. A little on the, the window. Up here across the top of the plane. So I'm just accentuating these areas that are already a little bit brighter. Um, how much? Uh, it's just, you know, preference. Um, then I'm gonna change, the, uh, I'm gonna make a new brush because now I'm gonna do the shadow contouring. So I'm gonna turn my exposure to negative, about the same amount, 0.7. And anything that's dark, so this, this area right here will now get a little darker back here as well up here on the top of the plane, over here, uh, a little bit on the nose. So it's just pretty subtle, um, but it's a little bit of contouring um, just to help, help it pop the shadows and uh, highlights. Uh, let's see what that looks like without the brush. So we'll just turn the, all the brushes off. So there we go. Yeah, you can see the difference here. Pretty subtle, but it's nice to be able to do this in uh, in Lightroom. So uh, the goal with this photo was to make it more dramatic, um, to accentuate the highlights and the shadows, to make it uh, even more uh, menacing looking than it was when we started. Uh, so that's the emotional goal. There wasn't really any, there was not much technical I did uh, as far as straightening, cropping, etc. Uh, here's how the image started. It's a little pink, a little purple, blue, uh, and I wanted to uh, make it just more uh, straight up blue and menacing. Uh, there we go. 
So that's a quick run through through how I uh, approach processing images in Lightroom, all the different tools that I can use. The other thing you'll notice in this is I don't spend a lot of time on each image. Most images uh, are, you know, two to five minutes uh, for edits. Uh, that's how I like to work. Um, I do enjoy Lightroom, but I, I, I enjoy taking photos more. Uh, the end result is, is to get to an image that I think reflects my, my personality in my photos, uh, the, a consistent look across all of them, uh, even though they're different subjects from this flower with the raindrops to the blackbird. There's, there's something about it that hopefully when people look at it, they will say that's a Michael photo. So it's another way for as I take images to make them mine, to make them more personal. This, their personality of the photo matches my personality as a photographer. So that's what we've done in Lightroom today. So I hope you help, found that helpful, um, both maybe some uh, technical, practical tips in Lightroom, uh, as well as some things to think about uh, uh, emotionally and logically and uh, philosophically as you're looking at your photos and deciding, what do I want to do with them? Why, uh, it's not just moving stuff around randomly uh, to see what happens, although sometimes it's kind of fun and uh, unexpected and happy accidents happen. But once you learn the software, uh, you'll have some things you'll naturally do uh, over time that will be the consistent things you do to get to the look that is a part of your voice in telling photos stories. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, love to receive your comments, your thoughts, your suggestions uh, in the comments below. Uh, please subscribe to this channel if, uh, if you would like. Uh, I'd love if you tell a friend or, or even 10 about this channel. I'd love to grow it and uh, get the more people learning about photography and uh, thinking about it more deeply and richly. All right, so I hope that's helpful, and I uh, look forward to seeing you again soon before too long. Thanks. Bye.